Lake Park annexation, annexation and rezoning of the Redwood property, Mr. Pritchard. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, you have in your packet a notice of petition received. The, uh, the you have received a notice of petition to uh, Lake Park to annex and rezone property as you refer to as a registered property. This property is bound by Highway 41, uh, Lake Park Road, and 4H Club Road, which is divided into two sections, one being a city street and one being a county road. The commissioners acted on this property in 2017 to rezone this property to a R10 designation with um, lot size of 14,250 square feet, as well as requiring that all the lots face interior roads. The petitioner has submitted a request, a conceptual plan that would eliminate that requirement of facing uh, property facing interior roads. That uh, new proposed document or site plan would allow a portion of the, the county portion to allow six lots um, adjoining the 4-H Club Road to uh, face interior cul-de-sac and the remaining six lots would allow um, those properties to face the county road thereby allowing curb uh, cuts to for access to that property. Um, there is uh, some legal matters associated to this and I would like to turn this over to the attorney to explain that. Um, the Georgia statute that governs this is explained very briefly on your agenda item cover sheet in the next to the last paragraph. Um, the Board of Commissioners may object because of a material increase in burden upon the county directly related to the proposed change in zoning or infrastructure demand related to the proposed change in zoning. For that objection to be valid, the proposed change in zoning must result in a change to a significantly different allowable use and differ substantially from the existing uses permitted under the county zoning ordinance. Um, one fine point is an objection, if there is one, must be delivered to Lake Park by certified mail or statutory overnight Delivery, which includes FedEx, uh, to be received by Monday, February uh, 24. That's 30 days from when the county received the petition. Now, um, if the county objects, um, there's a procedure for referring the matter to a five-person arbitration panel, which would receive evidence and argument and render a binding decision. Um, that decision is, however, subject to limited appeal to the Superior Court. Now, the statute also provides that the county, the city, and the property owner shall negotiate in good faith throughout the proceedings and may at any time enter into a written agreement, and that written agreement would be recorded in the real estate records and therefore be binding uh, on the city and the property owner going forward. In other words, it could not be changed in the future by the property owner in the city without uh, agreement of the county as well. Now, one important point I'll ask Mike to comment on is the reason why uh, he recommended the all lots front interior condition when the commissioners rezoned the property. As a part of our ULDC, that is one of the requirements when new infrastructure is built, is that all lots front interior roads, because of a safety concern of where there's not a curb cut every 80 or 100 feet. So 
so so that is why we you know we had put that into ULDC back in 2006, and we were just following ULDC when we were requiring that all lots run interior roads. Now I want to clarify uh, a couple of things here. The um, proposed rezoning is about the third. Um, well, second page of the attachment, and it petitions the city to allow lots fronting 4-H Club Road and Long Pond Road with homes to front the street with 120-foot lot widths. Now, I'd like to get you to turn to the last page of your um, attachments. This is the conceptual site plan. Now, this was not actually part of the petition. This was just furnished by Lake Park in addition to the petition. This is something that was prepared after the petition was. So the petition itself requests, well, let me just make sure we, we're also on. Four, eight, this long straight stretch of 4-H Club Road is a city street, uh, the north-south stretch. Long Pond Road on the east is also a city street, and this will all be part of the city if it's annexed. On the other hand, the northern stretch of Long 4-H Club Road that has a little zigzag in it is a county road, and the property across that street is in the unincorporated area. So the petition itself asks or would allow all lots to front that county road. Subsequent to the petition, the developer presented this site plan, which shows six lots fronting interior cul-de-sac, but six lots on the western end still fronting a county road. Um, so, while the developer has presented this conceptual flight site plan, that's not actually part of its petition, and its petition's actually inconsistent with this site plan. <laughs> so, now, you may decline to object. If you don't object, it simply proceeds forward. You may object and uh, proceed to some negotiation with the city and the property owner, uh, whatever that might be. Uh, you could also object and in your objection make clear that if certain conditions or requirements are satisfied, that would um, uh, satisfy your objection. But if you do not object, the annexation and rezoning can proceed without the fault. Is the, you may have mentioned this, but is the city of Lake Park exempt from our ULDC? Yes, sir. Um, it, if it's annexed, then it's regarding zoning and other um, matters related to property subject to the city's ordinances and not to the ULDC. Okay. Mike, the, the city of Lake Park does not. Is, is not bound by our ULDC, that they have their own zoning, zoning ordinance. See, the Lake Park does. I had a question, this gentleman, um, perhaps Joe, could answer it. Uh, in regards to the annual tax revenue of 1.2 million, um, who all made that calculation? Was that strictly that, uh, I guess, firm, or was our staff involved in that calculation? On the site plan, the conceptual, the last, the last one has, you know, 150 lots, half acre, larger, 220. That, that would have been strictly from them. Right? Like, I, that's not calculations that we have made. I just noticed the last line says annual tax revenue, one million two hundred and six thousand dollars. I'm not sure where they did that. Sure. I don't think that's any calculation that we have provided for them. That probably. I think that the issue is for the commissioners to consider is that in the 
initial discussions that we had with the city of Lake Park, uh, the developer got that information and came back with the change where you see those three cul-de-sacs on the north end to address six of those lots that was on the north end. However, they did not address the remaining six lots on the county portion of that road. Yeah. I would also add that from a standpoint of safety, that is probably your highest area of concern because of those, that, those two turns, those two curves in that portion of, of uh, 4-H Club Road. So, from a standpoint, the, the, as you consider this and think through this, then the issue is going to be, do you feel like it's important enough to object and to state your concerns about those remaining six lots that's there? That's really what we have to work with because that road is a county road and the other roads are a city of Lake Park Road, so we don't really have a lot of say in what, you know, what they do there on their city road. Have we asked the developer if there's an alternative? Because he did address the six on the, I guess that's the northeast. Mm -hmm. Have we said, hey, do y'all have a, a plan for this? Because obviously we made it clear that we were concerned about the driveways every hundred foot on the boy club. I mean, is, have we had that conversation with him? Anybody knows that? I did, yes, sir. And uh, I mean, this is what he's come back with. You know, I told him that if he, uh, you know, about adjusting those cul-de-sacs to make them longer, and that if they could not get the other six, uh, couldn't work it out, that we would bring that to y'all to determine if, you know, what the next thing. Okay. I, I think as much as anything, Mike, would be course, those cul-de-sacs on that northeast section were relatively easy to work out, maybe a, a little more difficult because you just got two lots rather than four lots um, deep from the interior road. Um, could that question be posed to the developer about whether or not he could work that out to address those six remaining lots? The Really the only way that the, those six remaining lots uh, are taken in is they would have to add a uh, have to move the road and possibly add or possibly add an additional road or something like that. That site may have had to be redone in that area. I mean, what they're what they've done is they just tried to take out double fronted lots, lots with double frontage. So I mean, it, the the site plan would have to be completely reworked. Let me get to something to think about between now and 5.30. Let me just say one more time to make sure. If you want to preserve your ability to negotiate with the city and Lake Park, you will have to object. That, does, that will uh, preserve your ability to continue to negotiate to a resolution not object, they will, you will not be involved. <laughs> but just so we're clear too, one more question. <clears throat> the, the property owners of those six lots, and I agree with you, I mean, if you just simply said lot, lot one and lot six of those in question, one is in a curve and six is in a curve, if you want to look at it that way. But those property owners will be, will be residents of Lake Park, the city of Lake Park. The road belongs to the county. Property owners are in the city of Lake Park. Okay. They'll have to come to the Public Works and Engineering Department to get a driveway permit. So that's how we would be involved, whether we sign up on driveway permits. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat>